Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning. We are excited because of your amazing grace towards us. And we say, speak, Spirit of the living God. Your sons and daughters are listening. Use me as your vessel and speak through me, God. A word, your word with simplicity but with power that lives are changed, lives are impacted, and that your name is glorified. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Uh, food is something that is so, so important in our lives. I don't know anybody who has gone, maybe some, several of us woke up this morning and had breakfast. Some don't eat very early, but then there are some who are like, if I don't eat, I'm going to pass out. And, uh, <laughs> but then food is just so important. It keeps us healthy. It keeps us strong. It keeps us just whole to become who we are. If we are even healthy and strong today, it's because of food. If somebody is deprived of food for a certain amount of time, their body just starts giving up because it needs food to keep going on and keep um, going healthy and keep going strong. So food is this thing that is just so important. But then guess what? There are some people who like different kinds of food. Some of us like the junk. Some of us like the healthy. <laughs> And whatever, it is still food. We eat it and our tummy is full, but it does different things on our body. So we see this text where Jesus, it's like there's a lot of talking about food from the very beginning of the text to the end of, of, the, of the text. And there is this issue of food that keeps coming up and bread, uh, different kinds of bread. And, uh, and it just got my attention. And I wanted us, we are continuing our series on Jesus the I am's of Jesus, and this morning we are looking at Jesus as the bread of life. I, he says, I am the bread of life. And last week we saw he was the I am that I am. The, he refers, all of these I am statements are connected to the I am of God saying, I am that I am in the Old Testament. Uh, so this morning, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just give us a brief overview of the, of the entire chapter for those who have not been able to read it, so we are able to all, all connect. Uh, if you start John chapter 6, the beginning of the text, Jesus does this miracle and multiplies bread and people, 5,000 men. When they say 5,000 men, the, the women are not added, the children are not added. So we are estimating like 12,000 people. Can you imagine? Multiply bread and everybody has enough to eat and they, they are all satisfied and everybody goes home in the evening. They are like, woo, free food. The next day they show up again. Who gets free food and does not want to come back? They show up again with this delicious bread and fish meal and everybody's looking for Jesus. He has crossed over to the other side and they follow him, take boats and cross to the other side. And Jesus is like, okay, come on guys, I caught you. You are not coming because of the miracles. You are not coming because you really like me or the things I teach. You are coming because of food. <laughs> like, child Jesus, that is too harsh. You should be at least nice a little and i know at times we see this jesus and we we our mind we, we 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 paint this picture of this nice jesus in the bible the jesus who doesn't do anything to make any people upset but read your bible well jesus i don't know how how to say it he, so there were some times when he's mean like there's some words he used on people i'm like whoosh jesus is that you it doesn't look like you jesus but guess what if a pastor there says that today you're in trouble you're going to be on the news like, she doesn't love me and all of that. But most of those, I'm not going to say that I'm not going to do that because I don't want to get into trouble. So just saying. <laughs> so Jesus um, gets them into this conversation and like tells them like, you guys did not come for, for, for the word or you didn't come because of miracles. You came because you wanted some more food. You ate enough and now you are wanting some more food. And then he starts telling them about the food that is, the food they are looking for is temporal. They are going to eat and after that they are going to be hungry again. And he tells them, I'm going to give you a different kind of food. And then the people are like, okay, Jesus, God gave our fathers, Moses gave our fathers manna in the Old Testament. And you are telling us about this kind of food. Explain. And then Jesus goes into this conversation with them. And I'm going to pick, read, I'm going to pick a few verses and just read that again to just get our minds refreshed. And then as we jump in. He says, when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate to your fill. 
the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life. Uh, verse 31 says, Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. And it is written, no, I'll just jump to 32. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father who gives you the, the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that is that which comes from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never die, and whoever believes will never be hungry. It's, it's just like the text is hard for us today. I think it was hard for those. Jesus is talking. It was hard for those people. When Jesus says, the bread that my father gives you, eat and never grow hungry, they're like, Jesus, give us our bread. I don't even want to be hungry again. I don't want to have to worry about food. And Jesus changes. Like, I am that bread of life. And changes everything, the whole, whole dynamics and all about. And, and I looked, as I looked at the text, I'm sorry, this, my hair is just acting out today. <laughs> so when I looked, <laughs> looked at the text, one of the things I thought of was a child who is coming back from school. Very hungry. They've had a whole day. They missed lunch at school. And they have not been able to eat anything all day. And they are super hungry. And they come home and their father or their mom has a sandwich which has some salad and some beef and everything inside. And on the other side, an ice cream. What would that child run to? Ice cream. The child is running to the ice cream because it's like it will satisfy them immediately. It tastes so good and all of that. And they can get ice cream and they get their sugar high and they can run. But they have not been nourished. Their body doesn't really have real food. And the daddy says, I'm sorry, you're not going to have ice cream now. Sandwich first before ice cream. And I feel like that's what Jesus is saying here. Like there is a food that at times when we eat, it might satisfy us temporarily. But it doesn't satisfy us for long. And that's what happens with junk food. We go for it because it tastes really good. It's not really because it does our body good. It's just the taste is so good. You know, anybody who's never, like, you've gone for some time, you've not had a soda, and you just get a Coke, and it just goes down your belly, and it just feels so good. It's that feeling. It's not the, the goodness it does to your body. It's just that temporal satisfaction. And Jesus is presenting a case in this text that there are two kinds of food even for our souls. There is a food that is temporal, that nourishes temporally. But then there is one that gives eternal value. And many times as humans, our temptation is to go for the one that satisfies us temporally. Like I want to go for the quick fix. I want to go for the one that meets my immediate need, the one that just steps in. And throughout scriptures, we see people who go for temporal satisfaction. We see in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, God has given them this entire promise of the world he has created and how they were going to govern. And then Satan comes and presents a bit and they're like, wow, this looks easy and good. Let's get it. And they go for something that was temporal, but then that was going to be destructive. We see David... With Bathsheba presented in front of him and it's like, she looks so beautiful. And David compromises his walk with God because there is this Bathsheba. It's a temporal satisfaction and he goes for her and misses that which is eternal. We see King Saul, he says, oh, my people are leaving me. But the prophet has given him a promise that the, don't make any sacrifice until the king shows up. Don't make until the prophet shows up. And it's like everybody is living. And because he wants to temporarily keep his own royalty, he goes ahead and disobey God to make people happy. And this is not only people in the Bible. We see ourselves day after day in the circumstances. Where we find ourselves wanting to satisfy our souls with things that are temporal. And we're like, if I just get a raise in my job, I feel like I think I'm going to be happy and things are going to feel better in my home. If I just make this dream trip and just travel to this country, I think my life is going to be really, really good. Or if I just buy this new car, I'm going to drive on the road and there's going to be real no trouble and no stress. I can jump into the potholes and out and not worry about anything. <laughs> we try to get all this temporary satisfaction. And the issue is there are things in our souls that are, our soul is yearning for something. And we keep telling our soul, if I get the things, 
then the need of our soul will be met. If I get the people to like me, then the need of our soul will be met. If I get the relationship, then the need of our soul will be met. But the need of our soul is for something that is bigger, that is deeper, that is stronger. And Jesus is telling the people, there is something that satisfies that in a way that nothing else can satisfy. And during the, this pandemic, several of us have found ourselves alone at home for hours and hours and hours. And worse still, in the winter, we can't go out and walk like we would want to. And our souls longing for something. And when the pandemic started, I remember we're like, oh, this is a season for revival. God is giving us an opportunity. Does my sound good? God is giving us an opportunity to spend time with him and all of that. And then we spend time with him for one month. And then two months. And then we got tired. Like, I'm tired of spending time with God. And then now when our souls are hungry... We're like, Netflix, where are you? And we start. And then our souls are satisfied with Netflix or Facebook or all the things we worry about and all the posts and from morning till evening and, and, and all of that. And we try to fill and satisfy our souls with the things that do not really satisfy. It's strange because the national statistics say addictions have gone higher in the season. Depression has gone higher in the season. And I wonder why. Is it because our souls are looking for something? And even though God did not cause the pandemic, there is a space that has been created where we can go so deep in, in our relationship with God and satisfy our soul with what true food is. But is it that we have fed our souls with junk? <laughs> We've allowed the things that do not feel to fill our souls. And the more we fill our souls with junk, the more empty we, be, we feel. And when that emptiness increases, then we have to go somewhere else to find help. But the good thing is that there is good news. There is, the Bible doesn't, Jesus doesn't just tell the people, oh, you are coming here for your selfish interest. You're looking for the wrong kind of food. You're looking for perishable food. He tells them that there is a different kind of food. There is something else we can feed our souls with. There is something else we can nourish our souls with. And in verse 50, he says, this is the bread that comes from heaven so that you may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. And whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I give you, I give the bread that I will give for and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. So Jesus presents another kind of bread. A bread that nourishes and then you never die. A food that when you eat, you are satisfied and you are made whole and you're, you're, you're healthy and you are strong. And I know you're like, okay, how do we eat Jesus' flesh? And how do we drink his blood? Like, If you go down towards the end of the text, I'm not going to go down. You realize that so many, so many of the disciples ran. Only the 12 remain. Like people run, the thousands run away. They're like, okay, Jesus, this is a hard saying. How do we eat your flesh and drink your blood? But we are not going to go towards that. I'm going to just focus on how do we, what is the bread that the Bible tells us about? And what is the flesh that Jesus wants us to eat? What is it that is his body that he wants us to eat? Over and over and over in scriptures, we'll hear the Bible talks about the word of God as food for our souls. There is no other food that nourishes our souls as the word of God. In Psalms chapter 1 verse 1 to 3, he says, Oh, blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the, un of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits on the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and he meditates on that law day and night. The Bible says he shall be like a tree planted by the riverside. When circumstances come, when the attacks come, he will not be moved, he will not be shaken. So, Jesus is like saying, my people, if you would allow, you wanted food, but what I'm teaching is a lot more powerful than the food you ate. If you would just sit, in, sit down and let this word enter into your soul, it's going to get you so grounded that when life storms come against you, you can face storm and you can still remain standing and unshaken and immovable. He says, feed yourself in my word. Get yourself rooted. And Joshua says it in Joshua 1. Hey, let this book of the law not depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. He says, therein you shall find success. Not success like the word says it. But that you would excel in life. 
Your life will be fruitful. You might not have all the multitude, but you live a life that is content, that is filled, that is joyful, that is at peace. And people wonder, why are you peaceful when you don't have all the excesses that the world has? Because you've come to realize that true food and true satisfaction doesn't come in the things. It doesn't come in the junk. It comes in the true word. Jesus is telling them, guys, it's not the physical food that matters. It is this word that I'm teaching. Listen. Let it get rooted in your heart. Let it go into your spirit and allow it to change your life. And, 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 like, and like Chris said, uh, many people say, I read the Bible and I don't understand. Or I'm even afraid to read it because I don't have the theological education. I didn't go to seminary to interpret scriptures. I would say thank God for seminary. But the truth I will tell you is that the Bible it's so simple that when you just read it with the eye of a child, God will speak to you. Just speak those pages and read it. Even if you want to read it like you're reading a storybook and just say, Father, speak to me. You'll be surprised that words will start jumping from those pages to your heart. Some of the scriptures that have stuck with me for life are not scriptures that I read after seminary. There were things that I memorized in my heart when I was a child. When my parents told us, you have to memorize the scriptures, and we had all this. It was, it was some of those words that helped me endure challenges and difficult times. It's not the ones I learned in seminary, because a lot of it in seminary it wasn't the Bible we learned. It was how to interpret the Bible. So we didn't really learn the Bible. And it's all the other extra things that you do. So you don't have to go to seminary to know. Ask anybody who's gone to seminary, they will tell you that it's not what you learn in seminary. So you don't need that to understand scriptures. Just take the book. Start the gospels, I think at times are a lot easier. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, they're a lot easier because they're, they're stories that you can connect with. Just read the story and say, God, what do you want me to learn? I have a few examples there. Ask, what do you want me to learn? Or, or, ask a question like, how can I use the scripture to pray for myself today? You read something about God multiplying bread. And if you want to take it literally, maybe you're going through time when you are in lack and your finances are low. You're like, God, would you bless my finances? Would you multiply them? How can you pray for them? How can you pray over that text? Or you read and you see those people who have been looking for, they are looking for more physical, they are looking for more physical food, things that will satisfy temporarily, and Jesus is rebuking and you're like, Jesus, I think somehow I've been, my, I've been like that, looking for things that will satisfy temporarily, but please, would you help my heart to start seeking for things that will satisfy me eternally? It's just, just read, read the Bible and ask God, how can I pray over this text? God, what areas of my life have I been disobedient? You read and you see maybe God says some, the, the scripture says something like, Wow, is it touching something in my heart? Don't say, mm, that is too hard, I won't do it. Ask God, how, is there something that is touching me that I have to change? Is there something that I have to cause my life to line up? We just ask simple questions and you realize that the world becomes so easy and so simple. But I really like to encourage us to spend time to read, to read the word. And, and as Chris said, I'll be sending, uh, we'll be sending out the, the scripture for the day. But if, if it's possible, if you want to join us, if you're not doing the yearly Bible reading and you want to take some time, and read through the book of Mark. This length is 40 days. Mark is just 16 chapters. Even if you are reading just a few portions, not even up to a chapter a day, you should be able to finish Mark before the year ends. Let's feed our souls with the things that really, really matter. But the next way, that the next food that Jesus gives, because if you realize, he says, my, my flesh and my blood is the food. It's a lot supper. When Jesus was dying, Jesus says, this is a meal, this is my meal. Every time you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And that's why when we come to the communion table, it's not just something that we do to remember. It is a, there is a mystery that is attached to that. You can come to the communion table, seek and get healed because you're partaking of the body of Christ when it comes, when you do it with faith. So Jesus is saying there is a food that satisfies my word, but also my body that is represented in the communion table. He says, every time you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Let my spirit come. Let your spirit come alive. 
lately since Lent started, one of the, one of the things I've been doing, I think, uh, I don't know if it was John Wesley who did that. He says communion was like his food. One of the things I do I wake, after waking up in the morning praying, doing my devotion, one of the things I do is I break communion every morning. God just quicken your life in the inside of me. Because this is not just bread. It's not just juice. It's God's life. And if anyway my soul is feeling weary and weak, as I partake of that table, I'm going it, I'm doing it in faith. That fresh life, fresh faith, fresh zeal is going to rise up in the inside of me. And my love for God is going to keep going up stronger and stronger and stronger each day. Jesus is telling the disciples, there is food that is different. And like a father, that father or that mother who tells the child, you can't eat ice cream. You finally, you actually have to eat this one because it's healthy. And even though the child might be upset because of that, we all know that one month later, or even two hours later, the child is going to say, Mommy, thank you because I'm stronger. That food that they have eaten can take them a lot longer than what if they would have just had ice cream. Ice cream, after 30 minutes, is gone, and they come back running to the house. I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. But when they eat real food, their soul is satisfied. So in this season, as we enter in this, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He is the bread. And as we feed on him this season, my prayer is that God is going to cause fresh life to rise in the inside of us. That we are going to cleanse ourselves of the junk and feed ourselves with what true food truly is. And feed in his word and feed on his presence. And if you're like, oh, Pastor Verma, okay, you are the pastor, so you can bless your communion. I want to also take communion every day. What do I do? Call me. I'm going to pray for them and bless them. And you can, if you want to do that, if it's a practice you want to do. But that's something that I've, I chose to do this season of Lent. You don't have to do it, but if you want to do it, you can. So my prayer this morning for all of us is that we'll cleanse ourselves from junk and start eating what true food truly is. So that the bread of life will fill us and we will not be hungry anymore. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you are the bread of life. Thank you, Jesus, that when you feed our souls, we can't be hungry anymore. So fill us this morning. Fill us afresh. Cleanse us of the junk, the things that distract us, the things that try to take our attention, the things that try to to fill the empty space and leave us in emptiness and leave the hollowness and the shallowness in our hearts. This morning we say we want true food. We want the bread that satisfies, which is your word, your body, and your blood broken and shed for us. So we receive that by faith. In Jesus' name, amen.